Chapter 20, Talismans, Philemon, the Pantacle. Garasara. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Really you comfort me when you turn from those abstruse and exalted themes with which you have belabored me so often of late to dear cuddle some little questions like this in our letter received this morning, do please, dear master, give me some hints about how to make talismans, that's the same as talismata, isn't it? Yes, 666, and the pantacle. The official instructions are quite clear. Of course semicolon one but somehow I find them just a little frightening. Well, I think I know pretty well what you mean, so I will try to imitate the style of Aunt Tabitha in the flapper's fireside. For one thing, you forgot to mention the lemon. Now what are these things when they are at home? That's easy enough. The lemon is a sort of coat of arms. It expresses the character and powers of the wearer. A talisman is a storehouse of some particular kind of energy, the kind that is needed to accomplish the task for which you have constructed it. The pantacle is often confused with both the others, accurately, it is a minutum mundum, the universe in little, it is a map of all that exists, arranged in the order of nature. There is a chapter in Book 4, Part 2, devoted to it, pages 117 to 129. I cannot make up my mind whether I like it. At the best it is very far from being practical instruction. The chapter on the lemon, pages 159 to 161, is even worse. An analogy, not too silly, for these three, the chess player, the openings, and the game itself. But, you will object, why be silly at all? Why not say simply that the lemon, stating as it does the character and powers of Hiwera, is a dynamic portrait of the individual, while the pantacle, his universe, is a static portrait of him. And that, you pursue flattering, is why you preferred to call the weapon of earth, in the tarot, the disc, emphasizing its continual whirling movement rather than the pantacle of coin, as is more usual. Once again, exquisite child of our father the archer of light and of seaborne Aphrodite, your well-known acumen has nicked the ninety and nine and one over as Browning says when he, he too, alludes to the tarot. As you will have gathered from the above, a talisman is a much more restricted idea, it is no more than one of the objects in his pantacle, one of the arrows in the quiver of his lemon. As, then, you would expect, it is very little trouble to design. All that you need is to make considerations about your proposed operation, decide which planet, sign, element or sub-element or what not you need to accomplish your miracle. As you know, a very great many desirable objects can be attained by the use of the talismans in the greater and lesser keys of Solomon the King, also in Pietro di Abano II and the dubious fourth book of Cornelius Agrippa.3, you must on no account attempt to use the squares given in the book of the sacred magic of Abramlin the mage until you have succeeded in the operation. More, unless you mean to perform it, and are prepared to go to any length to do so, you are a fool to have the book in your possession at all. Those squares are liable to get loose and do things on their own initiative, and you won't like it. The late Philip Hazeltine, a young composer of genius, used one of these squares to get his wife to return to him. He engraved it neatly on his arm. I don't know how he proceeded to set to work but his wife came back all right, and a very short time afterwards he killed himself. Then there are the elemental tablets of Sir Edward Kelly and Dr. John D. From these you can extract a square to perform almost any conceivable operation, if you understand the virtue of the various symbols which they manifest. They are actually an expansion of the tarot. Obviously, the tarot itself as a whole is a universal pantacle, forgive the pleonasm. Each card, especially is this true of the trumps, is a talisman, and the whole may also be considered as the lemon of mercury. It is evidently an idea far too vast for any human mind to comprehend in its entirety. For it is the wisdom whereby he created the worlds. The decisive advantage of this system is not that its variety makes it so adaptable to our needs, but that we already possess the invocations necessary to call forth the energies required. What is perhaps still more to the point, 
they work without putting the magician to such severe toil and exertion as is needed when he has to write them out from his own ingenium. Yes, this is weakness on my part, and I am very naughty to encourage you to shirk the hardest path. I used often to make the background of my talismans of four concentric circles, painting then, the first, and most, in the king, or knight, scale, the second in the queen, the third in the prince, and the outermost in the princess scale, of the sign, planet, or element to which I was devoting it. On this, preferably in the flashing colors, I would paint the appropriate names and figures. Lastly, the talisman may be surrounded with a band inscribed with a suitable versicle chosen from some holy book, or devised by the magician to suit the case. In the British Museum, and I suppose elsewhere, you may see the medal struck to commemorate the victory over the Armada. This is a reproduction, perhaps modified, of the talisman used by D to raise the storm which scattered the enemy fleet. You must lay most closely to your heart the theory of the magical link. See Magic Pages 107 to 122, and see well to it that it rings true, for without this your talisman is worse than useless. It is dangerous, for all that energy is bound to expend itself somehow, it will make its own links with anything handy that takes its fancy, and you can get into any sort of the most serious kind of trouble. There is a great deal of useful stuff in Magic, Pages 92 to 100 and pages 179 to 189. I could go on all night doing nothing but indicating sources of information. Then comes the question of how to charge the talisman, of how to evoke or to invoke the beings concerned, and of, oh, of so much that you need a lifetime merely to master the theory. Remember, too, please, what I have pointed out elsewhere, that the greatest masters have quite often not been magicians at all. Technically, they have used such devices as secret societies, slogans and books. If you are so frivolous as to try to exclude these from our discourse, it is merely evidence that you have not understood a single word of what I have been trying to tell you these last few hundred years. May I close with a stray example or so? Equinox 3, 1, has the neophytes particle of fratero.i.v.v.i.o.4 the frontispiece of the original? Four volume, edition of magic, the colors vilely reproduced, is a lemon of my own magic, or a particle of the science, I'm sure I'm not sure which exclamation mark five, most of my talismans, like my invocations, have been poems. Six. This letter must be like the Iliad in at least one respect, it does not end, it stops. Love is the law, love under will. Yours fraternally, 666.